He will give to you even more than you gave. Yeah. He will fill your pockets until no more, until no more will go on. It will be so full that it will come out over the top. Yeah. Think about how you give to other people. Yeah. God will give the same way to you. Yeah. So uh, in the name of Jesus, this will be offering, and that will be, again, that one scripture is Luke 6, verse 38. Father, we will just want to thank you, Father, for your love, Father. We pray that um, you bless those who will give to you, Father. We pray, we pray that you bless those who don't have nothing to give, Father. We pray that you give your hands full. pray that you will bless us in this day, Father. In the name of Jesus, we love you. Amen. You know, others don't have no hand. 
They don't have no seed. They don't have no, um, but, but, you know, but thank God we have our hands. Yes, you know, glory.
Katoto sulu ile atua. I want to talk to our own man in Tangata. I want to talk follow in Tangata. I want to talk to our own man to poor. I want to tell him that if you are not telling me, I only have two of them. I want to see the man who has performed my tattoo. He let you know for you and your two of them. He knows for you and your two of them. Tattoo, Baba, I, Mama, for five, he tell me that I am a woman who is alive. And your soul is going to survive. For my your soul, for my your soul is going to survive. Now, when my your soul is going to survive, I will be it. So, tell me, no more for me. I will be able to tell you, 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 I don't know what you want to know for my eye. I follow the sun. I don't know what you want to know. Who is the author? Who is the author? I don't know what you want to know. 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 I don't know. Ma tutti a un po' di aiuto. Um, and 
please bear with us, because you know I got my sister Terry on the piano right now. <laughs> Jojo. Proud of you, girl. You got it.
you know, when you graduate high, uh, high school, you know, you you want to do adult things, you want to hang out, drink, right. smoke, and all that. Well, I was one of them that was doing that. Um, hanging out in the wrong crowd, drank a little, here and there. One thing left to another, I was on top of a bridge. They said the police was coming. Instead of me running around the bridge, I rolled off the bridge. And to find you, if a bridge is from here to there, I'll take it down. You're just rolling off and you're falling down. So when I fell, I fell on top of a person. But when I fell on top of a person, my arm was the only thing that broke. My arm. This is my arm today. This is my arm today. I never said anything to anybody because why? I was so embarrassed. You know, but today I'm speaking live because I'm here today. I'm a living testimony because God's not done with me yet. God's not done with you yet. God's not done with you yet. You're here today because what? God's not done with you. God's not done with me. Even though I'm at work, early in the morning, I'm the only one there. Or on the freeway. You know, cars going like this. You could have been in that little car accident. God's not done with me. God's not done with you yet. Right. 
There's too many bench warmers right now. We don't need bench warmers. We need people on the field. Yeah. Ready to go, ready to catch that ball, ready to uh, seize the moment. Yeah. Yesterday was such an awesome experience for me. Yes. It's been a while doing street ministry and, um, you know, uh, backpack, back to school, backpack, giveaways right. and food drives. It was such a blessing. Yeah. There were times that we got kicked out in Psalm 1 churches. They kicked us out in our own culture because they could, they didn't understand what God was doing. And I'll never forget when we traveled 5,000 miles over to the island of Hawaii. We literally was ridiculed at that gathering. But you see how God moved. The soldiers came out of that church, stood in the parking lot, and we held hands and we pressed on because we said, God, we didn't come here to get angry or to be upset. We, we trust the process, God, because when the devil's trying to attack, you're about to do something great. And what happened? The moment we stepped on that stage, the Holy Ghost hit. People were slain under the Holy Ghost because you know what? It was no longer about us. It was about Jesus. We had to remember our purpose there. Wherever we went, we was always reminded our purpose. It was all about Jesus. It was not about us. We may never, there were times that we went. How many of us remember newborn and Darlene and Mona? We went, ministries went starving. And even though we were starving, man, God found a way to provide to feed us. There were times that we traveled, we had no gas. But we were so passionate about doing the ministry for the kingdom of God. God always found a way to provide. Always found a way to provide. That's, that's a testimony of in season and out of season. Yeah. When things don't look good, we still got to trust the process. Yeah. When we, we don't understand what God's about to do, we still have to trust the process. Oh. I thank God. I thank God because he's still God and he has not changed. In season and out of season, what we went through. There's many of us that is going in season and out of season, but the question is where are you? Where are you in your season? We can say what we want to say and do what we want to do, but where are you in your season? God is looking for people that's in season and out of season. Whether you know the what I've learned in order for you to be successful, I've heard a person say, the only way I was successful was I hated what I did, but I knew the purpose, what I had to do. Let me say that again. I hated what I did, but I know there's a purpose where I'm going to. Many times we don't want to come to prayer meeting. Many times we don't want to wake up. It's the hardest thing. We want to sleep in. It's our body that's telling us. But if we remember our purpose in season and out of season. Yesterday was, a, was an experience and a reminder for me and myself. It spoke to me. I was there for a reason. And I'm going to share this testimony. And then I know I I think my kids were sitting in the car when I was talking to my sister. Um, and I know that the car was running and I know I just remember, okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. About a year ago, something happened. I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with it, but um, there was a video that went viral. I posted it. I didn't even realize the song on it. I remember when I posted that video, in the background there was Christmas music going on, so I, I, I wasn't even thinking. I just, if you know me, when I post videos of my children, it's because I love them and that, that they're just spirit-free people, you know? That they're just, if you know my kids, that's just how they are. But I didn't hear the music that they were dancing to. And it was a trend at that time. I was mocked, I was ridiculed, I was crucified for that video. And it took a person that didn't live all the way holy for God to call someone in the family and go, hey, bro, tell your sister to take down that video. It's going viral. They're, they're talking about your sister, man. They're talking. And I said, wait, what? What? I was in the room, and I remember it was late in the evening, and my son, this one here, Joshua, was, mom, mom, what's going on? Take down that video. There's a video of you, and then there's people talking about you. Blah, 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 so on, so on. Long story short, I was 
I got invited into the sister sharpening sister. I went in there. Mind you, it's an awesome ministry. But how many of us know that even snakes stays in the church too? Even snakes lives beyond us and we, we just don't know that. But you gotta have a discernment. See, I did not even realize. You know, when you think all the sisters have the same vision and have the same heart, not all of them are that way. That moment that video went viral, they downloaded that video and started dissecting my preaching with that video. And I was, I wasn't, I was like, wow. But what hurt me is that I was, I was, I disappointed myself because I was thinking of my husband, that he gives the word and I said, I'm so sorry, I didn't even realize that. The moment my brother called, my brother-in-law called me, I immediately took down that video. And that video, wherever that video was, it got taken down. And so there was a sister that I saw yesterday, and she's one of the board members. And I told her, I said, you know what, God, you brought us here. You brought me here. You brought her here for a reason. Let me have some closure. I told her under the tree, and I said, you know, there's something that I need to talk to you about. And there's nothing about you, but see, how many of us know when you have a true friend, a true friend tells you even though it hurts. They tell you something even though it hurts because you love them. And this whole time I had thought my sister knew about the video. And I said, hey, you know, sister, I had to disconnect myself. It was the hardest decision I had to do. But because there was one of the sisters in the group that reposted the video and goes, wow, this is this is the pastor's wife and this is what she's doing and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wow. And she looked at me and she cried. She goes, sister, I did not know anything of it. I just, this is my first time hearing it. And she goes, I'm so sorry. We both cried and we both hugged. She goes, Easter, if you don't know me, I don't, I don't dare nobody to bring up your name because even my church members, if they try to say something about you, I got your back. Because we have a relationship that people don't understand as pastor's children. When we don't have nobody to talk to, we call each other. Because we need that. I need that person to go to. There's not many of them that I can I can turn to and that we can bond and we can that can understand what we what we do behind um, um, what is that um, as being a pastor's pastor's kid, pastor's children. And so with that, I was from that time on yesterday. No matter where I went, I couldn't, I couldn't stop crying because God was so good. Amen. God was so good. Because the whole entire time, I was just like, I felt that ease. I felt that peace. I was like, well, this whole time, my sister just told me, sis, I did not even know. You know me. If I saw that, I would have called you immediately. And I told her, I said, no, probably you didn't know because the third day that video was up, you believe third day the video was up, I had over 5,000 views. Do you see how the devil works and how people's minds are? You tell you, you post up, as much as I post up, oh, all is welcome, come to church. We only get like 70, seven chairs, eight chairs. That video of my daughter and I posted it, over 5,000 views and it was still going on. It went as far as Hawaii and one of my best friends there didn't even realize that that was about me. But I said, it's all, it's all good, it's okay. I'm only human and I make mistakes. I said, it's all good. I said, I never said I was perfect. I'm far from that. But I thank God because that was a lesson learned for me and my children. And I thank God that, you know, um, being a pastor's wife or being a, a pastor's kid, in season and out of season, then it teaches us a lot of things. How to stand, how to respond, how to act when things arise unexpectedly. But I thank God for his word. I thank God for his unchanging love, his, um, his power of love and his power of forgiveness. So if there's anything today, please take heed of every encouragement you heard today through our elders and um, Sister Mona, Sister Darlene, thank you for the powerful testimony. You know, look at your neighbor and say, I am a living testimony. Tap your neighbor and say, I am a living testimony. Remember that day when you said, God, I know, I 
wouldn't be here. Danny says she should have been dead and gone. I shouldn't have been here. How old is my handsome? I have to say this again. Handsome, handsome, where are you? Where's handsome? Oh, he went to the work. Okay. How old is handsome? 19? Oh, 19. 19 years, 19 <laughs> years ago, I should have been pronounced dead on the bed. But you know what? It's just like what Sister Johnny Hood said. I am not done with you yet. <laughs> so I thank God that God is not done with me yet. So um, be blessed. And I thank you all. I cannot do this without you. Me and my husband, we can't do this without your prayers, without you. We are here because of you. We are strong because of you. We learn because of you. And together, we are the church. Amen. So just know, have a blessed week. I love you all deeply in my heart. I am so blessed to have each and every one of you in my life. Blessings. God bless you.
Jesus will be there. 
bless all those that give, those that can't uh, are not able to give at this time, Father God. Have your way in the name of Jesus. We love you. Amen.
Thank you.